Ladies and gentlemen, Captain speaking, just waiting for an aircraft to uh, land at the Val d'Or, so uh, we won't start the engine right away to save fuel. As soon as the uh, on final, we're gonna start up and taxi for departure. Thank you. Before start checklist. Before start. Parking brake. Set. Flight deck door. Lock. Fuel. Fuel uh, got uh, 12,000 kilos, six pumps on. Check, passenger signs. On. Crawl protect. On. Windows. Lock left. And lock right, HSI. Heading uh, 318. That's that hurt. Take off speeds. Take off speed 153, 157, 161. Check PDCS pre-flight. Not installed. 300. Text takeoff briefing. Complete. And collision line. On. Before start checklist uh, completed. Start engine number two. And clear right. Start engage, short valve open. And two. Pressurizing. And one. Full flow. Light up. Sorry, get out. Start off closed. Go ahead, Malik. Engine number two is stable. Start engine number one. Star engaged, short of open. And two. And one. Up oh, rising. Flaps one before taxi checklist. Flaps one. Before taxi checklist generator. On. P28. On. MTIs. Off. Uh, off. Valve. Auto. Engine start switches. Low ignition. Recall. Check. Auto brake. Off. Engine start reverse. Auto detect. Flight controls. Yeah. Check. Ground equipment. Clear left. Hey, clear right. Before the exit checklist. Okay, Cree is coming, so we be stay we can stay short of echo. And Valdor Radio 950. Valdor Radio 950 is ready to taxi the apron all short of echo. We've got, uh, we've heard about the uh, incoming traffic, so we're gonna all short and him uh, come off to your runway, looking for the IFR to uh, middle back. Lane 9950, Roger, active runway 36, wind 340 at 3, up minute 2984, traffic estimating in 3 minutes, dash 8. Advice into the runway. Yeah. Number 84 is going to be departure runway 36, Lane 9950. Roger, runway 36. One minute, DPUF. Off. Nine five zero clearance. Ready copy. No number five zero. Take clear. Nine nine five zero to Meadowbanks Airport. I have Valdo Airport. Five zero north. Zero seven nine west. Backpan route. Climb five thousand. Approach runway three six. Direct to Valdo VOR on course. Squawk one zero one five. Do not depart until departure validation is received. Nine order five zero is clear to the Middlebank Airport via Valdor Airport five zero north zero seven nine west flight plan route climb five thousand feet depart runway three six direct the Valdor VOR en route squawk one zero one five to depart and the turns validation is received. Be back right. Okay, Valdor VOR en route so we can put FMS FMS Check. FMS and five thousand feet and one zero one five. Excellent. 
So waiting for traffic to uh, land in Val d'Or. There's no radar up to uh, the ground, uh, so we're down to the ground. So uh, since there's no radar, we cannot move IFR until the traffic is either cancelled, the IFR are on the ground and clear of the runway. So we got a dash in on final here at 136. As soon as uh, off the runway, we'll be taxing for departure. It's a departure uh, runway 36 northbound. That's it. Hello, radio in order 950 is taxiing Echo, backtrack and line up runway 36. Clearance valid runway 36. Clearance valid runway 36 and order 950. Yeah, clearance valid. So our clearance is valid runway 36. Yes, sir. Clear left. And clear right. Transponder TCAS radar. I think she's done with her passenger briefing. Oh. Six seven. Yep. Six uh, seven traffic advisory vicinity of Valdor in or nine five zero Boeing seven thirty seven is backtracking on way three six shortly departing northbound to Meadowbank. Let me follow three two zero. Oui, c'est bien ça. Et merci beaucoup pendant deux minutes. And cabin secure check before the cuff checklist. Before the cuff checklist. Flaps. One green light. Stabilizer trim. 4.3 units. Actually, 5.3 units. Sorry, 5.3 right. Before they got checklist Thank completed. You. So, we are 5,000 feet. Gravel protect off. Gravel protect off. Uh, we're rolling. Only 36 confirmed. 36. And then 950 rolling on 36. Engine stable. Take out trust. Set. Check. Any nuts? Check. Contact 
1,000 feet. 1,000 feet. Speed bug at 230. And flaps up the light. Turn out checklist. Turn out checklist. Engine bleeds on. Back sun. Landing air up enough. Flaps up the light. After the checklist completed. Thank you. Well done, everyone. And the waypoint. Speed 250. Speed 250. I'm not sure I'm saying 50 over Valdo VR. Climb level 280. Climb level 280 and I know I'm 250. Can you put the heading uh, up front, please? Yep. Thank you. Heading up front. Yes, sir. Temperature is over 10 degrees. No need for anti ice. Check. Thanks. FMS, FMS, top of the engage, heading select, FMS pitch roll. Check, FMS manual. and pitch mode. We are seeing 10,000 feet, speed 280. Speed bug 280. Uh, I'm going to wait for the seat belt sign. And engine okay. size on. Engine TI sun. Check. Engine stable, 185. And the Eber. Sure, we can advise you 26 on the Valdor, Rion, and Orniner, 5037 established on the uh, 352 degrees radio, 17, 170 ME from the uh, Valdor VR, coming to uh, 1,300 1, feet. Outbound, northbound to Middlebank. Hey, fly. Engine TI off. Engine TI is off. Sit by sign off. 191. Sit by sign off. One one five, so we have two, Twenty one five, check. Half time is one three two zero, ETA one six two zero. One three zero six, oh. Ten minutes late. Not bad. Can open the doors. Is 
Silver. It's over. French Isle Silt, man, already set to 9 or 9 or 2 nine inches. Nine two. 12 all 1, uh, 8 2. Check, uh, right. Two zero zero. Take control. You got to come. Got control. So fly all three two zero. Yeah, three Speed two zero. Uh, Mark seven three direct the uh, five five SMS zero SMS. zero eight three west. I have control. So basically, we are now level at thirty two thousand feet and at fly level three two zero, and we're uh, cruising at Mach decimal seven three. Uh, you, I don't think you see it from here, but uh, what happened is the speed is uh, moving a lot. Since we don't have the auto throttle, uh, we always have to. Uh, adjust a little bit uh, because of the air density temperature and as we uh, burn more fuel uh, the weight is decreasing so that's why we're moving a little bit at this time uh, we, we are just uh, 23 miles from 55 north 83 west if we got here on the uh, ipad that's a route from uh, val d'or here to middle bank so we're just about to cross this uh, waypoint here and we're going to start across the hudson bay so it's going to be basically only water for the next, what, 300 miles? Yeah, for more than that, maybe 400 miles. So the Hudson Bay here. And I don't know, but this time of the year, I don't think there's no uh, ice anymore. But uh, you, we can see ice almost until middle of June, almost at the end of, uh, of June. So uh, once you get there, uh, usually we need to do a position report over the Hudson Bay because they don't have radar. But this aircraft is equipped with the ADSB, so everything is done by itself. And it's, I guess, ADSB is not current on any aircraft. But for a 200, it's a retrofit you need to be installed. And uh, the Canadian airspace legislation is going to change soon, and we're going to need ADSB in all, all our aircraft. And that's exactly what uh, we're going to have uh, in all our 737-200, exactly like the the screen there we we have here. Uh, middle bank, Nunavut. Uh, for those who know a little bit about Canadian history, uh, Nunavut is a, uh, a territory, uh, sovereign territory, part of Canada. Has been uh, administered uh, since 1999 by people from Nunavut. The capital is uh, the original capital. We can say that is Iqaluit. But we're going on the totally on the west side of uh, Nunavut, at the west uh, end of Nunavut. So uh, Iqaluit will be uh, here. And we're going right here. And as I said, you can see here, right there from the Canada map, Middle Bank is right in the middle of Canada, almost equal distance from uh, every uh, part here. 
Meadow Bank, uh, it's a gold mine where we're going. It's a short runway, 5,000 feet in gravel. So today we're going to land with flaps 40. Why flaps 40? Uh, flaps 40 would allow you to uh, get three knots, about three knots less than flaps 30 on landing. Deceleration is better. Uh, also, as we don't want to put too much reverse surge thrust for the dust and everything, uh, flaps 40 as we can a little bit slower, it's going to help us to decelerate on the runway. And we're still going to put the auto brake to help out deceleration, probably minimum or medium. It's kind of uh, standard operating procedure. Now we can see uh, that Charles is going to take the uh, reading. We're do doing just a fuel check and we keep all the fuel uh, and the times just to sure if the flight plan works fine with what we got in the FMS and what is our fuel consumption. If we were burning way too much fuel at this point, we could probably thought that there will be a problem with the engine or even a, uh, a leak. So that's why we keep it a, a fuel a log at all time. So we're passing 55 North 83 West. The next waypoint is going to be 57 85 uh, West. F 57 North 85 West. What's different in the Northern airspace is that we, all the runway are in true. As we go and see a middle bank, I'm going to show you the plate. Middle bank, the runway is in true. So we got the RNAV 12 true and the RNAV 12, uh, 30 true. So all everything is true because uh, the compass there is, uh, is is wild. It's too much. So what they said is north of the uh, of a line that they did put is the northern uh, space, and uh, from that uh, point on, all the way to uh, the North Pole, everything is in true. So in this aircraft, we got a small uh, switch that we're gonna press, and we're gonna switch all the FMS, all our heading from magnetic to uh, true, so it's going to help us for the approach. And it's kind of in middle bank, the, the deviation is not that great, but uh, in uh, alert or resolute bit, there's a big deviation. And uh, if we didn't have that, it will be uh, it will be hard to maintain a uh, situation solar awareness. What's, what's the deviation there? Uh, the four deviation degrees west. is four degrees west, so it's not a big deal there. But uh, as you go uh, resolute and uh, alert, it's much, much better, uh, bigger. So it's pretty easy when you compare to back in the old days when uh, people were just uh, dead reconning it. And with uh, dead reconning, especially in a place up north where you don't have a lot of nav aids uh, and uh, lots of time you don't even have uh, the sun to help you out because during the winter it's almost 24 hours uh, dark. It was uh, lots of challenge and those guys, they were the, the real pilots, the real pioneer. Today it's pretty easy with what we got and uh, all the technology we got uh, today and all the airways that's passing by uh, over the uh, over here the, uh, the the arctic and we hear, uh, hear a lot of traffic on the atc uh, almost all day traffic coming in from europe and it's going to pass over the hudson bay even a little bit uh, more west and go to uh, the states or even southern canada and at night it's the opposite uh, you can hear them going back to europe and in the afternoon when we go back to montreal we're probably going to pass some uh, flight that are going to Asia, going from the East Coast or uh, Toronto. And uh, sometimes they start way much lower than we are. And uh, we're going to pass them. They're going to be lower than us because they are full of fuel. And as they get on the other side of the Pacific, they're going to climb a little bit higher. Um, that's pretty much Middle Bank. Uh, Middle Bank, it's nice, really well uh, maintained mine. Uh, People coming in, most of the people, they got a two weeks on, two weeks off rotation. So those people here is going to land there and then going to come back about two weeks. Uh, other just say a week, sometimes just uh, one or two uh, days. And it's one of their big sites, but there's another one at about 100 miles, a little bit more than 100 miles near Rankin Inlet. That's another place where we're going uh, uh, with our 737-200. And uh, you saw that we bring cargo. So probably they got food in there, uh, parts for uh, engine or whatever equipment, and you got the people in the back going there. When we're gonna land, we're gonna refuel, bring other cargo, bring back the passenger going back down south for their uh, vacation. 
But the thing is, the runway is short. It's still, uh, what, 10 degrees Celsius out there today? Yep. So we're going to have to stop in Churchill to refuel because uh, it's too the runway is too short to have enough uh, fuel to go direct to Val d'Or. So on the way back, we're going to stop to Churchill. It's another big, long runway uh, built uh, during, uh, I think it was during the war. It was, uh, and after that, during the Cold War, it was a, a base also at Fort Churchill. So it's a long base and used to be, someone told me it used to be the um, space shuttle alternate, uh, one of the space shuttle alternate runway when they, uh, they were having a problem, they could land there. It's a really, really long runway and kind of in the middle of nowhere on a small village. But uh, it's really practical because uh, it's the end of the road, of the railroad, all the cargo is uh, shipped there. And after that, it's uh, sent up north and all those communities uh, via aircraft. The aircraft here is pretty much basic, except that equipment and two FMS we got and the uh, ADS-B. Uh, all the other equipment we got here, it's the same that uh, it was when the aircraft got out of factory, especially the uh, engine gauges. Maximum takeoff weight of this aircraft is 50... 54,000 uh, uh, kilos. 54,000 kilos and the maximum landing weight will be 48. 48-ish uh, thousand kilos. A bit but different on gravel. Yeah, gravel is different. It's uh, 47. Seven, yeah. So we got a restriction on the gravel. It's going to be a little bit less, but we're going to be, uh, oh, it's going to be way bef below that. We're going to land at uh, 46,000 kilos by the time we get there. So uh, as a bit closer as we brief the approach, we're going to find the uh, VRF for flaps 40, and uh, we're going to uh, be able to figure out our uh, approach speed. The uh, the nice thing about those flights is we never know what to expect. Today it's beautiful, and uh, when it's beautiful up north, it's really beautiful. The Arctic is totally, uh, even if it looked like a wasteland somewhere, there's, there's no trees, the, 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 you know, there's still a lot of, uh, of uh, animals there and uh, vegetation and small, uh, uh, small flowers and things like that. It's really, really beautiful, and every season there is beautiful, either from, you know, middle of winter where it's really cold and really dark or during the summer where it's uh, so you know we got the sun up uh, almost 24 hours a day and you got uh, those uh, small little flowers some caribou and some uh, what else uh, some uh, not rabbit but the arctic uh, arctic r i don't know if the right is uh, the, the word is right but that's why it's so um, so nice to do those flights because we never know what's gonna happen we got a schedule to keep, but still condition can be really tough. And when I talk about uh, contaminated runway, uh, high wind, uh, blizzard, or uh, during the summer fog, there's a lot of time you got to have fog. So it's always a challenge, that's for sure. Um, why we're here? Why we're doing this job? I don't know if Yashal can start. Uh, yeah, before I do, one thing we could add about uh, Middle Bank, it's a uh, gold mine. Operated by uh, Agnico Eagle, which is one of our uh, biggest customers. It's a gold mine, so uh, that's about it's a it. Big mine, big big mine. It's a huge mine. It's a huge mine. It's getting uh, and there's a lot of a uh, lot of resource up north. And as you know, global warming is getting on. They find a, m a way more resources. Uh, it can be iron or gold or whatever. So they're trying to exploit that, but it's really expensive. Doing those flights is expensive, so uh, they need to be sure that they got the uh, right amount of resources and that uh, when they were exploiting that, they're going to make money of it. But at the end, they need to clean up everything. So once the mine is done, they need to just keep it, bring it back the way it was. They're probably going to keep some building, but anyway, that's more uh, Anikoui gold stuff, so we're not really uh, part of that. We're just the uh, we're just bringing the people there, but uh, that's uh, that's what they have to do. Every mine that's going, uh, working up at north, once they're done and they're closing up, they need to clean up everything they've done and uh, bring back the way it was before they start the operation.
I studied at the uh, public college in Quebec, which is the only public flight school in uh, in the entire province. Uh, it's called the uh, Centre École de Formation Aéronautique. Uh, I think you're graduated from yes, there also, like but a few years before it's me. It's a college, you can say that. It's a yeah. We call it CEGEP, but I think it's the same thing as a college in, in the States. Or yeah, uh, in so after secondary school, we get to go there. Uh, actually, I didn't go there after uh, secondary school, so I waited a bit. I went to the university and then uh, went back to, co to the college. Uh, I started uh, flying as a private pilot during my time at university, and that's where I realized that I really wanted to, uh, to be flying because uh, I didn't see myself being anywhere other than in a cockpit. So uh, I enjoyed being in the air. It was something that felt normal to me or yeah. I liked it very much. Uh, I like the fact that you can travel long distance. So today we're going to go about, uh, it's 2,000 yeah, miles. Yeah, about 2,000 miles just to go there. Back is and forth. Back and forth is 2,000 miles. Yeah, yeah, a bit more 2, than 2,000 so miles. So it's uh, like 1,200 going in, in both directions. So it's 2,000 miles plus doing the back and forth in one day back in and one forth. day and uh, those are our 14 hour days that's what we do at Lenor we get the uh, all the duty we can from our day but uh, you get to work two or three times a week maybe four times uh, schedule always changes so uh, there's never a routine and uh, yeah that's it that's nice we're doing a lot of different stuff so one day you can bring cargo up north minus 40 and uh, the next day you can bring passenger in Cuba or uh, bring a VIP flight or a hockey team, a charter. It's always like that, that we got that more scheduled part of our job and the more charter part of our job. That's what is not in our, but not all the company are like that. No. Some company are really more like the schedule is really more, uh, it's more the same or as a plan before. And uh, especially the big, biggest company, the big company. And uh, the lifestyle suits me well too, because I'm not, I'm not someone to be in the office 8 to 5 every day all day all week long so I'd rather have a, a schedule that changes and uh, we have a uh, we sometimes get to go to uh, Yellowknife for two yeah. weeks uh, maybe three or four times a year we go two weeks in Yellowknife doing an all cargo contract with mines there uh, diamonds mines uh, yeah, uh, gold mines if we look at Yellowknife it's, it's in northwest territory it's a uh, it's really at the other end there uh, of uh, Canada, near the uh, Brig, uh, the uh, Brig uh, Great Slave Lake. So uh, main base is Montreal here, but uh, you know Knife is based here. So it's a nice, uh, nice change of scenery for uh, two yeah. weeks. That's pretty cool. And another thing that's cool is, uh, as you said, one day you get to fly passengers, the other day you get to fly cargo. Um, you get a lot of responsibilities because you're only a two or three guy team. So you need to uh, to use all of your resources to make sure that everything goes well and that you carry out the, the mission and the contract well. So that's yeah, what I like to about the job. Yeah, you need to be a good team. And that's the other thing also, the, the, the cool thing we're doing, or the nice thing we're doing with the 37, is we got those contracts every uh, spring that we're landing on an ice trip. Yep. So basically it's a, a lake that they just plow and we bring cargo, fuel, and even sometimes passenger. And it, it's around uh, um, one, two months. It's really, really challenging. It's a uh, one-of-a-kind contract, so and we can do it with a 200. I don't think we'll be able to do that with other aircraft. So we're really lucky to be that part of the company and part of it flying those kind of, uh, those kind of aircraft. And it's an aircraft that's a lot of manual stuff. We still need to think a lot. There's not a lot of automation, and we can disconnect, take it by hand, land, and land on short strip, uh, ice runway, long strip. It's uh, it's different. It, it's we're getting really good and it's kind of uh, sharpened our, our, our skill to uh, be able to anticipate and uh, a, little bit, a little bit like they used to do back in the 60s or 70s. So that's that's pretty nice with, with that. But being a pilot, not only in R, it's a lifestyle, as he said. It's, uh, so it's, it's really nice. You see a lot of nice things. You're not stuck in an office, we can say that, but you're making a lot of sacrifice, family, uh, holidays, and uh, whatever the company, even if you've got a company with a big union or a company without a union, when you got to start, you got to start at the bottom of the, uh, the ladder, if we say that. And uh, you're going to miss a lot of birthday, loss of uh, Christmas. And uh, you need people around you that can understand that. 
so it's probably the down part of being a pilot but I mean I don't know for you but for me uh, it doesn't really it's not a big deal I mean it's uh, it's the, all the good stuff that come out being a pilot it's way 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 much than the uh, bad part of being a pilot that's if I can say so and you're able to deal with that and uh yeah let's say we're able to uh, you need people that understand around you and as you say it's a lifestyle it's a passion if you're not really passionate if you want to do that just for the money there's no money when you're starting up well <laughs> you really start up with no money but as we get in a more uh, better position or uh, job with the bigger aircraft now it's the pay is much much better especially like exactly what we're doing here at uh, 99 What I like about being a pilot, especially at Nani now, is we're doing and we're going to place that I will have never been in my life. Most of the communities up north or even some destination uh, in the States, I probably will never uh, be able to go there in you know, vacation or on my own time. So that's why it makes this job so remarkable. So, uh, so uh, I want to say it. that's why it's such a passion. You can see so much thing, uh, meet so much different people and uh, pilots who are doing an international route they go all over the place they can uh, see much more different culture and uh, find and that's the way I learned about Canada because be able to fly to every provinces and every territories I was able to learn about the history of Canada of my own country and something I probably would not have done if I would have stayed uh, in a, a job who's more like uh, more a, a, a office job or something inside job so yeah, we're pretty lucky though what we're doing. And the uh, the lifeline of those communities in the north are the the airstrips, because the? the airstrips, the yeah. airplane, because uh, there's no way you can reach that by road. No, exactly. Sometimes the yeah. boats come in maybe once or twi twice a, ye a year. Yeah. But really, the uh, the aircraft and uh, companies up mon up north doing scheduled flights or cargo flights or charter flights, they are the lifeline of those communities yeah. and when I started flying I was a first officer in a PC-12 with uh, Panorama Aviation and uh, that's what impressed me the most the uh, the landscapes we had the chance to see places we had the, the chance to visit were places that you wouldn't even though if it's in your country there's no way you can reach that no. unless you pay big bucks to yeah. go there so it's a chance that really that many people have yeah and people that's the people don't realize in Canada it's much 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 easier to go to Europe than to go uh, in uh, northern Canada because it's not expensive and they got flight going Europe almost every day but uh, going to uh, Canada the Iqaluit I think just the, the airline ticket to go to Iqaluit it's probably uh, what close to one thousand dollars yeah more uh, just one way I guess it's almost yep. uh, the price to go to Europe it may be even more than that so we are doing that and we're paid to do that that's the really nice part and as he said there's some place that even you know like the mine where we're going if we were not an employee uh we would not be able to go there because it's a, a private airstrip and it's a, a company owned uh, airstrip so it's not a place that uh, someone can uh, decide to uh, decide uh, decide to uh, visit once in a while so uh, once again it's uh there's nothing really i know it sounds weird but there's nothing really since well, I've been doing that for almost 20 years now and uh, I never never regret doing that job and I'm not, I'm not coming from a aviation related family I was the only one who really liked aircraft when I was young and I just decided this, uh, like him to go to college and I was able to start flying at 19 years old but nobody in my family liked aircraft I was not raised with aircraft I was I didn't have any airport at my, at my place I was just I don't know it's something that really attracted me and today I think it's the best choice I ever made then if people want to do that choice, I think it, they will not regret it. But you have to make sacrifice. You have to understand that nothing is free. You have to work your uh, your way up. And uh, even that, the road, the, the the what you're doing to go up there to go to the uh, big airline, it's what's enjoyable. All the small aircraft we're flying, all the piston engine, the small twin, uh, all those little jobs like the PC-12 is flying. All those jobs are amazing and uh, something that you're going to remember all your life. So, 
you have to enjoy while, while it's passing because after a while it's done and when you're flying the big iron you don't want to go back and fly a small twin uh, piston engine so. and that's something i realized in school sometimes you uh you're so rushed to go through classes or to try to get a better job or uh, I won't say better job, I'd say no, different no, job. Different job, yeah. Different or the job. big job because that's, uh, yeah. the, that's the vision every guy's uh, got, uh, guys and girls. You need they to be get big time big, yeah. and flying time. And uh, while you're doing that, sometimes you forget to, uh, you're so focused on getting hours and flying that you, you forget to enjoy the thing. Exactly. So that's something in school I realized and because the program is three years long and during the third year you realize that it's almost over and you yeah. were so focused on getting to the end that the first two years passed by so quickly and now you've already reached third year and it's like you there's not much time left but you have to enjoy what you're doing because it's paid so it's public school it's it's not expensive there are uh, there are only a, a few people that are accepted each year in that school. Otherwise, y you could do the the same classes on in private schools in the in Quebec. But that's the only public school where uh, you have to go through uh, different tests before yeah. being accepted there. So you have to really enjoy the yeah, the I enjoy testing because that's the thing about life. We always try to have the biggest job, have something you know, something bigger, bigger, and at the end, sometimes the guys on and girls or bigger aircraft, they're not, they're not uh, that happy. They got the condition, they got the pay, but sometimes they wish they could fly just a small uh, Cessna, a small bush plane, or they, they remembered back in those years when they were flying a bush plane. Oh, by the way, we're just passing uh, 57 North, or right on fuel, and we're uh, one minute uh, late. Or well, next point, 60 North. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now that's the, that's the thing. Every time we got new guys coming at the uh, job or uh, some guy that doing a jump seat at school, I just tell them, enjoy, as you said, enjoy everything you're doing because it goes so fast. And once you're on a, a Airbus or a big Boeing across the pound, you're gonna you're gonna remember when you were flying a small float plane uh, in a lake in the middle of uh, of nowhere. <laughs> it's gonna be a uh, those years are gonna be the best years you had, and uh, so you have to enjoy it and uh, learn from it also. Because, uh, and you can see that some pilots, they're not uh, in the business to uh, fly, they're just in the business to make money, but it's not the way it works at all because I'm not sure that everybody's making money. It's and we're having a different operation where pilots and mechanics and linemen and everybody works together because we, we are the team that comes with the, with the aircraft. Sometimes, yeah. depending on where we go, there are no ground crew waiting for us, so we are the ones loading the cargo and the aircraft, strapping the cargo and the, uh, well and the cargo nice. sheets. And so that's what brings the team together. And it's a small team. Where how many are we? Yeah, we're 35. 35, uh, 35 pilots. Yeah, 35 pilots. Uh, let's that. say 35 attendants and uh, a few mechanics that fly with us. So that's not many people to get the job done and uh, yeah. we get to know each other very quickly so that's another that's nice nice part of the job yeah a team you're with a spirit. team and you create bonds with people and it's not only a uh, small talk during uh, well small talk all day long you get to know right. people you get to know each other yeah some people like it other people like to just punch in punch out and don't really know the people that I understand that big big company they, they, you don't know always the people you're flying with it's uh, sometimes it's good that you know the people you're flying with sometimes it's not because you sometimes you know too much about the people and <laughs> especially when you stay with uh, someone for two weeks uh, on a contract after uh, two weeks uh, sometimes you can get uh, a little bit more tense yeah. but uh, we're used to that so we try to uh, make it as smooth as possible So we still got a 
And now we're and 15, we're in 15 minutes, minutes to, go. to fly, yeah. We're right over the Hudson Bay, I don't know, probably I uh, can see we're just passing a cloud cover and we'll be over the water, uh, we're gonna see the water soon. And uh, we will be there, yeah, at uh, an hour and fifteen, about fifteen minutes. There's no, there's no headwind today. There's nothing. So, so during the flight, yes, we're on autopilot. Who's following the FMS each waypoint? Uh, we're always adjusting the speed with the thrust lever. Uh, the flight attendant in the back, they. Uh, give the uh, services to the uh, passenger food and the beverage and uh, we doing a lot of paperwork also logbook uh, we saw the fuel log the flight plan and once it's really small and it's short leg we always try to prepare the next leg to be uh, the most uh, effective as possible because when we got some some of our days got eight legs yeah some days they got eight legs and you're short and, uh, right, right there on the duty because in Canada it's a 14 hours duty and it starts one hour before you get to the aircraft and it stops 15 minutes after you shut down the uh, the engine uh, that duty time is going to change next year or at the end of the next year 2000 uh, so it's going to be more a bit more like uh, Europe and but for now it's 14 hours so sometimes eight leg in 14 hours that's that takes a lot of preparation and you need to always be ahead of the aircraft and be ready for the next uh, next flight and uh, have everything prepared, flight plan, uh, weight and balance. And I think we didn't show the weight and balance. Yeah, uh, uh, I think balance. it's on your I side. On si oh and some things that something that we could add before uh, showing them is that the uh, takeoff we get takeoff weights and uh, weather reports from dispatch. But all the other computation, uh, takeoff speeds and things like that, the are not. We cannot input them directly in the, no, in we the don't FMC. Have FMS, no. So it's more like a control unit than a uh, full integrated what? FMS. So uh, that's why long days with lots of legs can become tiring, and we have to make sure that we cross check everything, cross check and verify everything. Just everything to make is sure done by human. Because yeah. all the uh, all the the paper is is filled out by the the station, and after that it gives us number and the weight and balance that we're gonna take and put in the iPad and find our own uh, speed. We need to always cross check with dispatch the station. So uh, it's really uh, it's an easy process, but uh, it's a process that you can make uh, mistakes. So we always did eat cross check. Both of us are cross checking each other. We cross check our numbers. Cross check with dispatch. And when we're flying there, dispatch is following us on the uh, uh, sky track. The uh, the the, uh, the uh, that's it. The name, the sky track. It's yeah. just sending a position report, automatic position report every. Is it? I think it's two minutes, or I don't know. I don't know the time frame. I rem don't remember the time frame. But they got a big screen, a big TV screen at the office, at dispatch, and they can see our aircraft, the whole route of the aircraft, and they're gonna send us a couple of the time uh, some emails. They are giving us the weather destination of the alternate, and we can call them whenever we want on the sat phone there, uh, just to get more information. Or so it's really it's pretty it's pretty nice when you got a problem, uh, either mechanical or weather related, and you need to go to another airport. You just call them, boom, right away, they're uh, on the line. You tell them what's the, the plan, and uh, after that you can take a, a, a big you know a, a nice decision with them with OCC, the Operation Control uh, Center. And that's another thing that, you know, the basic 200 doesn't have. We have to put that with all the screens. So they're pretty well equipped for uh, the job they're doing uh, up north here. We're in the church in the middle bank. Uh, I'm gonna get the flight plan. You're gonna do a walk around. They help out the flight attendant. The mechanic's gonna help out, uh, especially with the cargo, unloading the cargo, looking at the fuel. And uh, once everything is set, we're gonna bring back the passenger, bring the cargo, close it up, and we'll be on our way first to Churchill, Valdor, then 
it's going to be uh, Mirabel for the end of the day. How many, what's duty time we should have today? Uh, we should be there around, uh, let's say, 7 p.m. So around So that hours would be 13 hours, 13 today. hours yeah. If everything goes it's not well. Bad. We're used to that, but you know, when you're doing that three or four times a week, it's, it's tough. Yeah. We need to respect our uh, flight time and duty time during the week also, but... Uh, yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's uh, and this summer has been has been a big summer for yeah. us because we have uh, uh, there's a company in uh, in Canada. Well, one of them had many 737 Max, Max that yeah. couldn't fly. Yeah. So they were looking for uh, charter companies, and we we stepped up. So we did a lot of uh, a lot of flights to the Caribbean and uh, in the um, eastern part of Canada. Yeah. On the, on the east coast, going to Atlantic, get the passenger, bring back to Toronto, and one of our aircraft also doing a lot of uh, Mexico, Cuba, Bahamas uh, destination. It's kind of a bus. It's it's sad for the uh, 737 Max and the uh, all the incident and accident. It's for the Boeing company, but uh, as for the company, for our company, when they ground all the uh, uh, 737 Max, uh, all the aircraft available were yeah. called up. So that's why we're flying so much this year. Yeah, especially this summer, and we're maybe having other aircrafts coming by the uh, by the end of the year. But yeah, that's the thing. We that's never what know. We, were told, we never know. That's the nice thing about a small smaller company. You can, if uh, if someone needs uh, some kind of aircraft, boom, we buy it and we uh, put it in operation. We're pretty fast on that, and we got a lot of uh, pilots, young pilots like uh, Pierre Chal, who can step up and be captain in a few months. So that's that's really nice. We got. Uh, People who really, really want to uh, make the company work, make the things work, work out. So that's why we got a lot of reserve, if we can say, as a young uh, pilot. That's another thing also that 99 is pretty good as the uh, the time as for the officer is really short. When they got hired with a few hours, they, uh, they upgrade really fast. The minimum hour um, flight time experience would be we don't have really it depends. Yeah, but minimum minimum would be 250 hours because of the... Uh, the ATPL, yeah. Uh, the yeah, I had a rating that, uh, that Yeah, for a first officer, you're right. And after that, as captain, you need your uh, airline license, but you especially need the uh, the concept of what is we're doing there, the, the ability to see ahead and to plan and to adapt. And uh, because handling is a, a thing, but, you know, with jets, handling is not everything you have to just be uh be i was i can say that proactive always need to be a a few yeah. seconds before the aircraft and things what's coming on and especially that we're stuck somewhere with no services and the only person we can really depend is the crew uh you need to be resourceful resourceful no resourceful yeah resourceful yeah resourceful makes sense resourceful and the thing is flying the aircraft is one part of the job yeah, just but that, that that's you know that's the mean you get y you you use to get the cargo and passengers to where they uh, they have to go but the job is to get those passengers yeah. those passengers and the cargo there so the fact that we're flying the plane is not our the only or the biggest portion of the job no it's not it's not it's really the, uh, to be able to work in a team CRM to uh, work in a different kind of condition and take you know decision it's always a you know a process try to make it as uh, as easy as possible but sometimes some situation when you got the uh, weather mechanical passenger problem you, at the end of the day you take one decision sometimes it's not always the best safety wise it's always going to be the best because yep. that's the main priority safety sometimes it's not the, the best for the company or as for the economy or economically for the company sometimes it costs a lot because they need to send another aircraft or uh, something is different or you need to take another route thing it's going to burn more fuel but number one priority always and will always be safety if you respect that at the end of the day you know that you're done your job and, and the that's, rest is a that's box. the thing with companies charter companies you're you don't have uh outposts or bases everywhere yeah exactly so there is not one, two, or three aircraft waiting for you when you get it to Churchill. You are maybe the only one doing that route to during the day. So if something happens, if you need uh, to change parts, if you need spare parts, then we have to send another another aircraft from Montreal. Yeah, one of our aircraft. Most of the time is the Learjet with a part, and um, with that, sometimes you change the crew, so you need to send another crew. 
and uh, there's no maintenance so we need to uh, send our own guy or like on these flights we always got a mechanic so and what 80 percent of the time the mechanic with the flyway kit is going to be able to uh, get the aircraft out and the mel the boeing mel is pretty good so there's a lot of things that uh, are not uh, that can be uh, put uh, out of commission and still the aircraft can be dispatched on a uh, mel it's a minimum equipment list so uh, boeing and Transport Canada, I just said that uh, flying with only one instrument, it's still really safe. Sometimes you need to respect some different uh, uh, procedure or and different sometime operations. Sometimes even if something can be put on, ME on an MEL, if you realize that depending on the weather conditions or the, the, the type of flight that you have to do, it won't be safe enough, yeah. then we just won't do it. We're going to yeah, send exactly. an aircraft with people right. to... Even if you're dispatched, it doesn't mean that you're comfortable with it and it doesn't yeah. mean that it's the right thing to do. So sometimes we're just going to cancel the, the flight or just ground, uh, put the aircraft on the ground at some place and wait for, uh, for some parts. Also, the other thing we're going to do at uh, a gravel, uh, to have the gravel uh, protect, the gravel vortex uh, working at the best efficiency, we're going to need the bleed air from the engine. So what means? It means that we're not going to have the engine pressurizing the aircraft on final. So that's why just before we start the approach, we're going to start the APU. Once the APU is running and stable, we're going to put the pressurization of the aircraft on the APU. And at that time, we're going to be able to have the engine bleed just for the uh, vertex generator. That's nice. We always got the flight attendants calling us once in a while to see if everything's OK, because they're pretty far from here. They got the two pallets and the cargo, so they need to pass just beside the cargo to get in here, so they call once in a while to know if uh, everything's okay. Welcome on board Nolinor Aviation. This is a Boeing 737 200 series. The 200 series can be configured with about 119 seats when it's a full passenger configuration. Today we have two cargo pallets, so we only have 77 seats. We can go all the way up to uh, only 11 seats when uh, the client needs some more cargo to be carried. So my name is Nathalie. I'm with my colleague uh, Jessica and uh, usually when we're in combi configuration there's only two flat ends working. Uh, we usually we always have to sit here at the back because gar the cargo is up front. Uh, today we're going all the way to Meadow Bank which is a gold mining site. So there are workers going to work for two weeks in a row and then they go back home for two weeks off. Uh, we did serve breakfast earlier so we always serve a hot meal. Uh, we have two different choices. The overhead compartments are really small and they have a strange angle. It's because when we're in a combi or if ever we have to be in a cargo configuration, we need space for the cargo pallets to be slided down all the way to the back. So it leaves little, very little space in the overhead bins. We also have some smoke detector on the ceiling uh, over each pallet, so if ever it is a fire. The flights are fully trained in uh, firefighting, so we would be trained if ever uh, we have the bad luck on being on a flight and there's a fire situation. So we do a lot of re really remote areas, like the mining sites that we do, it's really remote and hostile uh, environment. So passengers, uh, year round, they must, be, they must have closed shoes or winter boots or full winter attire. And it's the same for the crew. So if ever there's an emergency and we need to evacuate, we need to be fully prepared with uh, winter boots, winter coats, uh, underwear, uh, we used to have a contract for a mining company, and when we started the contract, this was the winter, but the runway wasn't long enough, and they didn't have, uh, it was too hostile to try and uh, make the runway longer. So for that first winter, we uh, were landing on a nice lake, 
So it's a company from Toronto, an engineering company that um, had made the study and everything. They had, they, we needed a certain thickness of ice to be able to land there. So it was a special experience for one winter that we did. And then the following spring, they did make the runway went longer than, uh, so we were able then to, to land on the gravel runway. So something that's special with the type of flying that we do, since we go way up north, even in the summer, that we don't carry water in the water reservoir because the water could freeze. So like to prepare coffee, we have like coffee jugs. So we leave in the morning with hot water and even in the toilet, they need to put some antifreeze to make sure that the water doesn't, uh, doesn't freeze. So what is special about Nolinor? This is actually my third airline I work for is at first we might think that it's not as exotic as other destinations that other airlines do but we actually go to really cool places that we would never go on our own list especially like in the arctic i would have never gone there uh, on my own so that's uh, that's really interesting so if ever you're interested in joining us just click here at the bottom and please join us uh, to, uh, you'll see it's lots of fun So we just received a, uh, as we were saying, the email from dispatch and he's telling us that uh, actually we're going to have to uh, go to Rankin and Let on the way down south to refuel instead of going to Churchill. So that's, as he said a little bit earlier, uh, we always need to be, uh, you know, change of plan. No, it's, it's, not a, it's not a big change of plan, doesn't affect really much, but still it's the way, the way it works here. We never know when we're going to change destination or alternate or or refueling point. Do you know the uh, the weather at uh, Middlebank? That was a message. Or oh, it's not there? No. Oh, okay. So probably going to send uh, and us uh, so. Maybe a funny story to tell about that. Last year we did the... Uh, every year we do um, uh, polar bear sightseeing yeah. contract out, uh, of Winnipeg. out of Winnipeg. Yeah. Uh, we take people to Churchill. They spend the day there and then we take them back to Winnipeg. So that's a... Uh, maybe an hour and a half going from Winnipeg to Churchill and the same thing going back and when we arrived we were um, taking the aircraft on the first day of the contract from Montreal to Winnipeg and when we arrived there we received a phone call from dispatch telling us that the following morning instead of going to uh, Churchill as it was planned we had to uh, get to the aircraft earlier to go to um, near Toronto, pick up passengers and bring them to San Antonio in Texas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's we were right. leaving for two weeks contracts uh, up north, winter gear and everything in our suitcases. And then we arrived for, uh, I think it was four days in uh, Texas with uh, only a pair of shorts because that was our bathing oh yeah, suit yeah. and uh, all of our winter gear. So everybody uh, ended up at the, uh, at the mall to get proper Buy clothing it was plus 25 degrees typical typical uh, no happening at Nolinor and that's another thing sometimes you leave Montreal it's 20 degrees Celsius and it's uh, still minus 40 up there so you bring your goose your all your big gear and then you get back to Montreal you're it's so warm uh, and it's something you have to remember to uh, take a look at the weather in the morning before going to work yeah. just to make sure that you're never caught without the proper gear yeah, yeah you're right yeah, because if you do the other side, you forget your uh, your winter gear because it's so hot down south. You're gonna regret it when you're up north. Yeah. Especially when you get a mechanical and you need to help the mechanic. It's nice to be well dressed. So we're gonna wait for the uh, latest uh, weather latest. report. I'm not sure we're gonna have it because we got the alert there. So yeah. Anyway, the wind were pretty calm. So once we got the wind, we're gonna decide which runway. Are we gonna go straight in three zero or come back on the other side one two? Yeah, not gonna make a big difference. Should be on the way uh, three this morning because winds were the wind are pretty much cross wind. Yeah, yeah. I think you're pretty right. Much but the thing is, we have to remember the middle bank, all the, uh, the 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 mills and all the uh, the uh, the garage and the, the hangar and also the uh, the the you know what's the place the rooms and everything. All those buildings are really close to the uh, uh, airfield, the strip. So when you got a wind coming from the south. The wind is picking up through those buildings and they go down to the strip. So you can, uh, sometimes you can, you know, probably have some uh, 
small wind shear, you know, because the, the wind is, is getting really fast and sometimes it's accelerating or it's stopped. Same thing, you remember, 3-0 when you're on the final, yep. that big, big uh, pit there. So uh, the wind it's go in there, they go up. It's always kind of tricky when you it's land there. It's a closed pit now. Yeah, they're oh yeah it's closed. They're eh? Yeah, they're not, use they're not using the pit. Uh, They've taken everything they could from that. So they're going to put back the, uh, the, the hearse? Yeah, they're supposed to be filling it. But they've started digging a new pit a few kilometers, uh, a few miles northwest from the from the strip. Amaruka. Yeah. Amaruka. And then Rinke and Led, they, uh, the, the, the other place where we're going, yeah, they yeah. started production of, uh, they started digging and production of gold. A uh, few months back, so last week was it last week or two weeks ago? It was the official opening of the mine. Oh yeah, and no, it's a couple of weeks ago. So, so we had uh, many more flights going there. Two or three we flights were at the same times. Uh, that's nice. Uh, we're just coming to 60 uh, north. So when we're gonna pass that, uh, Pierre Charles is gonna switch the uh, the selection from magnetic to uh, true. And we're just gonna follow the uh, through uh, yeah. through track at this. And point. we're gonna navigate in uh, yeah. using true tracks and true heading. Is it on your side, yeah? Can you give me also the uh, VRF for the landing flaps 40? Yeah. So uh, if I can access the. Oh, it's right here. Yeah. The other thing is go. we're uh, uh, limited on the gravel for the uh, reverser at uh, 1.8. When we touch the ground, the gravel there, so I'm probably gonna go to 1.6, something like that. So, uh, flaps 40 at uh, 46,000 kilos would be 129. 149? 129, yeah. 120, okay, 129. So, we're gonna set that in here. So, since there's no wind, uh, Boeing want us to go uh, minimum an additive of 5 knots, or maximum 20 knots, depending on the wind and the uh, gust. Since there's no wind, we're only going to add uh, 5, so we're going to be approaching at 135 yeah. knots. So bug speed is always 5 knots, a minimum of 5 minimum knots, five knots yeah. greater than the... Uh, a flaps 40, the angle of, uh, of attack is kind of different. You get a little bit more flat and then even nose down. So when you, uh, you get in and you go to the flare, you need to, uh, to be really aware to not pull the, the truss too much, too high, because it's going to do a nice pancake, but at least... Uh, it's pretty good because it's going to give a lot of drag, so as soon as you're on the ground, you can feel the aircraft decelerated with those big flaps uh, open out. And the uh, auto brake is pretty effective. Oh right yeah, the, the brakes yeah. are amazing. As soon as the, uh, the runway, uh, as soon as the, the wheels turn, the auto brake grips, even with the, the nose wheel in the air. So you, you have to actually be careful not to drop the nose wheel because yeah. it's going to grab so fast. Said it's so effective, but we're still gonna put some reverser. Uh, um, there's no need to put it medium. I will put it medium during the winter when it's kind of slippery or cold, but the uh, minimum will be way, way, way much perfect. It's gonna be smoother, that's for sure. So we're crossing 60 north. Uh, so gonna make the switch. Yes, please. So as you press, it's becoming true. The way we know that is we got here on the switch and also just beside the uh, heading there. We got a big T, meaning that it's in the true. The heading are in true, the course is in true. And it's exactly what we want to do the approach. And I'm going to switch the uh, VOR to Please. Can you put 284 uh, for the uh, NDB there? On the. 284? Uh, 284, yeah. 284 for Rankin. There we go. Oh, can you call dispatch? Should be good to have the uh, weather. Yep. I'm gonna have VHF one and two. You have VHF one. And so what he's gonna do? He's gonna go on VHF. Uh, it's uh, audio number three, and he's gonna go call dispatch with a sat phone. So we can have the latest weather, and if we're lucky, we're gonna have the uh, weights on uh, departure from Meadowbank. So we already can compute our our, our numbers. So, so we got the um, <laughs> fuel load for our leg to rank and let we're going to rank and let because the uh, customer wanted the uh, maximum payload out of the out of middle bank okay so that's why we're going to rank instead of churchill okay because it's a uh, shorter less fuel. leg so we need less fuel and 
take okay. a bit more payload and then it's gonna be ranked in Let Valor. Okay. And uh, weather is uh, winds are two zero zero true at seven knots. There's a few clouds at uh, twelve thousand feet, and temperature is thirteen degrees. Okay. So I pretty much crosswind. You can do the uh, uh, runway three zero. Yeah, straight in three zero will be perfect. Ultimate air three zero. Perfect. Yeah, you can whenever you want. You can put it there. We'll we can take a look at it. Fuel is uh, six thousand one hundred kilos. Six thousand one hundred. So thirty one. Uh, let's say thirty one hundred. By the time the GPU is gonna yeah. APU is gonna burn the fuel. And we were per site. Uh, on time on fuel at uh, 60 north. Perfect. So now we know the winds. We know it's not going to change. We know it's the weather is beautiful out there. We can already plan and set our uh, approach. The only approach available at Middle Bank are the RNAV, but they are LPV. So it means that they go almost, they go all the way to 250 feet. But today we know it's visual. We're going to see the runway far. I know I said the same thing for Valdor, and uh, at the end we have yeah. a broken, but I'm pretty sure this one is going to be. It was good. supposed to be uh, only a few clouds at IOC2 yeah, yeah, and Valdor, so uh, by the time we got uh, the first weather report and uh, we began the approach, it changed quite fast. So, so uh, that's yeah. the runway, the RNF approach for runway 3 0 in Middle Bank. Love, yeah. uh, so channel got. ID is uh, A0346. That's, it, that's, that's what great. We got. I plan I'm going to change the low no link Please with middle bank. Middle bank, confirm. That's it, middle bank. Can you tell me what altitude at Pelbo? Was it 3,500? Yeah. And uh, Pelbo at 3,400 feet. 3,000, okay. Yeah, 3,000 feet. Out. That's a nice thing with the FMS. Right now, we're not doing it because it's still above zero degrees Celsius, but during the winter, we can change our altitude. Not the altitude, but we can put the temperature correction right in the FMS because that is get cold. The altimeter doesn't tell you the real, out and you can be stuck lower, and it's kind of dangerous in the mountainous area. But that's why, as soon as it's below zero, we correct all the altitude, we put it right here, and it's going to correct all by itself. So we're going to keep a nice, uh, stable uh, glide path for us. So let's see that. Uh, it's going to be a visual runway 302, uh, back by the RNAP 302. Altitude setting on inches, transition level at two standard pressure region. Re region, that means region, yeah, region, region, sorry. <laughs> that means that, uh, yes, we're going to be 2992 all the way to <coughs> flight level 180. Then after that, we're going to put the altimeter of the destination. But if we had to stay and do a level off at, let's say, 10,000 feet, we will still pull back to 992. That's what happens when you're in northern domestic airspace. Southern domestic airspace, as soon as you descend below 180, even if you have to level up, you're going to take the standard with the local, uh, sorry, the local altimeters. So, same at sea with your 100 mile, 2600. When you're using Baker Lake altimeter, we're not going to do that. They got their own altimeters. Our bearing are true. Aerodrome assist for aircraft wingspan less than 180 feet. How much are we spinning in 93 feet? MSA 2000. My planes go direct Pelbo at 5,000 feet. Sorry, did I say 5? I would say 3,000 3, feet. feet. From there, we're going to capture the glide path generated by the FMS. I'm going to follow that all the way to the threshold. We're going to threshold at uh, 468. So when we're at uh, 1,500, we can put it right away here. At 1,500 or at 1,400, actually. You're going to call me 1,000 feet. I'm going to call you landing. Stable landing, unstable, go around. In the case of a go around, let's see our option. We can go back to uh, middle bank, uh, middle bank, yeah, for another approach, depending on the fuel, or go back to Rankin and left. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we're going to climb 2000 on a track 312 to Tetsu. So we're going to start my descent. There's a small headwind, but we're still kind of 46,000 kilo. It's still heavy. Oh, sorry about that. Where's my. We're going to start our descent uh, 32, about 100 miles from uh, Middle Bank. Uh, we just reviewed that. I'm going to go right on the approach. Uh, the Papi, if I got three red, one uh, white, it's okay. Just leave it be. But if I got four uh, red, just let me uh, call the deviation and I'll come back. SCDA, we're going to follow that. Flaps 40. Lead's going to be off. So we're going to start EPU 10 miles from Pelbo. anti ice off, gravel protect on, auto brake minimum. No MEL. Condition bear and dry, it's gravel, so expect some dust. Maximum 1.8, but I'm still going to go about 1.6, 1.7.
and then condition uh, Sassy Gravel, we're gonna backtrack, go on the ramp there, and uh, shut down the engine after two minutes. There's no other time, just check my EPR, and that's about it. Do you have any question? I have no question, I'll call you a thousand feet, and I'll uh, be sure to start the APU, to configure the uh, bleed yeah, air for the switches for landing, and then uh, to make sure that you don't uh, go over 1.8 EPR on the reverse thrust. It's the same uh, briefing we always do. He knows about it. He knows what you have to do, but still, you have no choice to remind things. That's why we always do a takeoff briefing and an uh, approach briefing. Uh, at every airport we're going, it's part. It's mandatory part of our SOP, and we just follow a guideline. We brief everything because uh, it's easy to forget. And uh, sometimes we just allow for make one mistake, and that's it. So. Can you put the? Uh, can you find already the EPR? What? With I'm the gonna give you that. Oh, so it's uh, minus. Oh no, not minus. The it's plus thirteen. Plus, uh, yeah, it's not 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 yet the minus. So. Uh, let's say uh, two ten. Two ten. Yeah. And that's corrected for the EPR, eh? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. For EPR and. Um, Leads off. I meant I meant for packs off packs and gravel off. put their con. Perfect, thanks. We're still over the uh, water at Sun Bay, but we can see there at the on the horizon the uh, shore of uh, Nunavut, of the uh, Kiwatin region. We're going to cross right over Reykjavik Inlet, and then after that, we're going to come back <coughs> later. So. Yeah, 9950, Boeing 737, 140, 140 miles to the southeast inbound for the RNM approach, 830 through via Pelbo, Pelbo at 1610. Roger, here is the last advisory, wind from 210 at 05 knots, Cabo K, temperature 15, altimeter 3020, and no traffic. 3020, we check the remark. Um, just wanted to make sure that uh, we still have a fuel load of 6,000 kilos going back and uh, we're going to need takeoff weight. Takeoff weight 47161. 47161, we check and uh, fuel load 6,000. Affirmative. There's no another 5 zero Roger, we'll talk to you uh, over Pelbo. Roger. Nolino 950 for Middlebank. Uh, Middlebank, Nolino 950, go ahead. Are you still estimating the field at 1620? Affirmative, Nolino 950. Okay, descent checklist. Descent checklist. We don't have that. Uh, pressurization. Cabin uh, 280, landing at suit 480. Check, gravel protect. Yeah. Recall. Check. Auto brake. Minimum. Landing data. Landing data, we got uh, 130, 129, and minimums it's 1468. Check, approach briefing. Complete. The send checklist completed. So we have the uh, takeoff weight out of middle bank. Temperature is 15 degrees. Perhaps uh, 15. Tu la descente avant? Non, oh, ok, go ahead. Tu comptes sur? Uh, go ahead with the descent. Hamilton Sir, 9950, requesting descent. 9950, descent level 2900. Descent level 2900, 9950. Level 2900. Level 290. Yes, sir.
Ladies and gentlemen, good morning from the flight deck. My name is uh, Pierre Charbriat. I'm pleased to fly with Captain Jean Christophe Seguin this morning. Uh, we're soon going to begin our descent in uh, Meadowbank. Temperature is uh, 15 degrees with a uh, clear sky and light winds from the south west. Uh, on behalf of the entire crew, we hope you enjoy your flight with us today and we'd like to wish you a pleasant stay. Radar 950, surveillance terminated, contact Edmonton 134 decimal 0. Radar 950, 134 0, good day. Edmonton, good day, 99 uh, 950, we're flight level 320 and we're clear, flight level 290. Radar 950, roger, further clear that of high level control of airspace at your discretion. Radar 950 is clear of the uh, high level control of airspace at discretion. Correct, call me leaving flight level 230. I know 950, we'll call you passing flight level 230. Flight attendants, please prepare cabin for arrival. Speed 250. Check speed bug 250. Ça c'est fait. Each change you to 1340. Right, 340, and we're clear out of the eye control airspace. So I put 2600 there for the uh, 100 uh, nautical miles. Okay, 100 miles. Here we go. Starting a descent. Okay, speed book 250. And he said to call back passing for level 230 as usual. Check. Sir, no, 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 five zero, beginning level two three zero. Hello, no, nine five zero, sir. Thank you. Change on route. Changing the route, no, no, five zero. Have a good day. Me too. Thank you. Increasing speed for profile. Ah, what? Sure. Tight. Just so a bit. What the same mil? Ah. So I said 21, uh, 3, 18, 54, 4 miles. Right. Just a little bit. Can see Rankin. Van Rankin, Baker. Sorry, Baker Lake. Baker and Lake. You can see Meadowbank uh, somewhere in the distance. Aye, aye, aye. Attention level, altimeter reset, 3020. Inches. 18,100. Out time on 306. 4020, okay. 20, yeah. Sorry. And the uh, fireball. Uh, 17, what? 176? Okay, yeah. 17,500. Yes, sir. 10,000 feet above checklist. Approach checklist, altimeters. It's uh, two niner, three zero two zero. Check three zero two zero and fasten belt. On please. Fasten belt on. Approach checklist completed. Thank you. You want to give him an estimate for Pelbo? Uh, why? Please. The middle bank nine 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 five zero. No, no, nine five zero. Go ahead from middle bank. The Northern Ireland 50 would be at Pelbo at 1615, around 1620. Roger. LPV approach arm. Uh, Check. The is off. Yes, sir, thank you. The uh, start DPU. MSC is 2000 feet. 2000 feet, check. And uh, coming through 15 miles from Telbo, you start.
APU is available. Check. Gonna start timer. One Wait one minute. It's been a minute, so I'm gonna configure the bleed. The isolation valve is yes, closed. Engine bleed off. APU bleed on. Mm. Engine number two bleed off. And the bleeds are configured. Check. Easy, bien chant. Parfait, au sein d'un semi. Kevin Sigurd. Check. Laps one. Laps one. Check speed. Correct thing. Speed one nine zero. And speed bug one nine zero. Laps five. Laps five. And speed bug one seven zero. One seven zero. Waypoint. Check. Approach active. Okay, auto approach. Another bang there in order five zero over Pelbo final one way three zero. Two one zero at seven knots, so a full crosswind. Radio, Are The glider captured. Glides up alive. Heck. Glide slope captured. What's the win again? Two one zero at seven. Goron at two thousand feet. About yeah, Goron is set two thousand feet. Lap ten. Lap ten. Speed bug one six zero. One six zero. Gear down. Gear down. Lap 15. Lap 15. Speed 150. Speed bug Crossing that knee at 2,000 feet. Check. Any checklist. That's 40. Speed 134. Speed bug 134. Landing checklist. Engine start switches. No ignition. Speed brake. Arm. Landing gear. Down. Flaps. Or is it over in light? Landing checklist completed. Disregard overshoot. Sir. On the inside, 12 o'clock. Yes, sir. One thousand feet. Stable landing. Minimum. Correcting speed. Check. Well disengage. Confirm. Correcting speed. Speed. 
We expect some uh, shear at the short final. Yep. Break up, reverse or normal. Eighty nuts, sixty nuts. Tracking on the trees. Put the uh, AP online, please. Yes, AP online. And clear right. Back. Parking brake set, uh, AP online, shut down. Put down checklist. Shut down checklist, fuel pumps. Pump uh, one on. Two static key. Off. Hydraulic panel. Set. Flaps. Up. Parking brake. Set. And then start levers. Cut off. Weather radar. Stand by. Shut down checklist completed. Okay, folks, we're in the middle of uh, Canada, in the center of Canada. Thank you very much. We hope you enjoy your flight, and we'll see you on the way back.
there's the miles there with the whole uh, mining area. And right there in the back there, that's the tailing. Everything that uh, they took out from the, the pit. And as we can see right now, they're loading up the uh, fuel and loading up the cargo on the return. And as soon as we're okay, we're gonna have the passenger coming down and gonna get in the aircraft. And we should be on our way. He's giving us all the information about the weather. You got the wind there. And he's always in charge of the whole rest. So he's uh, giving uh, information for the fuel, uh, how much fuel we need. And anything he receives, he's uh, preparing all the paperwork, especially the weight and balance. Because everything comes down, down from the warehouse and needs to know where everything is going. So he's part of the, uh, the great team. A great team to bring everything here, in and out. And he's also taking the plane once in a while, so that's why he wants everything working fine. <laughs>